the reaction to today's football has been wild. People often label me reactionary, and yet I feel like I'm the only one with a little bit of a cool head here. Of course, today is a huge day in the title race. Of course, today could be the day that we look back on and we say that is the decisive moment. That was the sea change. That weekend is when the league was won. When Manchester City trounced Luton by five, then Liverpool drop points at home and then Arsenal follow suit and drop points at home. Of course, this could be the weekend that we look back upon. But people are already labelling Manchester City as champions. People are already telling me that Manchester City have won the league, suggesting that the engraver at the Premier League should start knocking Manchester City's name into that trophy for the fourth consecutive year. And that, my friend, is so premature. Of course, Arsenal feel like they're capitulating. Of course, Liverpool look like they are all over the place. And I think Liverpool's season in particular could fizzle out. But for Arsenal... They've dropped points at home to an Aston Villa team who are brilliant. They've dropped points at home in the Premier League off the back of a gruelling European fixture. When you think of Arsenal's form this year, when you think of Arsenal, what they have been like since the turn of the year, since they got back from that camp in Dubai, they have been phenomenal. They have been flawless. They have been the best team in the country and they've arguably been the best team in Europe. Today they've been beat. Today they have been beat. Up until today, in every single game that they have played in the Premier League, they got out of the game what they wanted. When they wanted three points, they got three points. When they wanted a point away at the Etihad, they got a point. Today, they wanted three and they got done. That happens in a title race. And look, this isn't me saying that I think Arsenal are going to win the league. This isn't me saying that I think that the title will be going to the Emirates. But it is me saying that anybody that is awarding Pep Guardiola his fourth title in a row is massively premature. Of course, City move into the top of the Premier League is symbolic. And the three points that Arsenal dropped is obviously huge. But this isn't it. You know, this isn't it. Arsenal are two points behind Manchester City with six games to play. That's not impossible. Yes, it's unlikely. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's going to take something spectacular. But this is the Premier League. We've seen this before time and time again. Six games to go, two points separating the teams. Bearing in mind, one draw for, for Man City suddenly puts Arsenal back in the driving seat. One draw in six games. Bearing in mind the fixtures that Manchester City are going to be playing. Bearing in mind the fact that they are fighting on three consecutive fronts. They have a, an FA Cup semi-final content, to contend with. They have the little-known club arriving in Manchester called Real Madrid to contend with. They then have six gruelling Premier League games. One of them, by the way, against their bogey team. One of those fixtures against the team that has basically troubled them forever and a day. Manchester City have never won. They have never won at this new look Tottenham Stadium. I know they won in the cup. It's not the same thing. In the league. You don't think that there's a world where Manchester City drop one game. They, they drop two points. They draw one game. And if they do that, suddenly Arsenal are in pole position because Arsenal have better goal difference. All of a sudden, it swings completely back the other way. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I think that's going to happen. But what is going on? Why is everybody awarding Manchester City the league? It makes no sense to me. And listen to this. This is a crucial factor. And if you're an Arsenal fan, you're going to love this. Because of other things going on, Arsenal will have played two games before Manchester City next kick a ball in the Premier League. If Arsenal win those two games, which they have to do, you know, there is a conversation and we will have that conversation in this video. There is a conversation if Arsenal are capable of winning all their games. But the point I'm making is if Arsenal do win all their games, I think they win the league. Can Arsenal win all their games? Different question. But before Man City play against Brighton, Arsenal will have played twice. So Manchester City will be going into a game against Brighton and if Arsenal do their job, Man City are going to be, what, four points behind. Manchester City are going to be going into a game in the Premier League at Brighton, sitting in the Premier League. Yes, they'll have two games in hand, but they will be sitting four points behind Arsenal. Surely that puts the pressure on Man City. Surely that could be a catalyst for dropping two points. You simply draw a game when you're, you've got to worry about Chelsea at Wembley. You've got to worry about Real Madrid at the Etihad. You've then got to worry about Arsenal or Bayern Munich. In the semi-final of the Champions League. One draw. I don't understand how. Simply by being two points behind with six to go. Arsenal would have given anything to be two points behind with six to go. When they lost consecutive London derbies to 
to it was West Ham, wasn't it, at the Emirates, the first game they lost at home, and then they went away to Fulham. If you'd said to an Arsenal fan, you're going to be two points behind with a better goal difference, with six games to go, you would have taken that. Arteta would have taken that. Everybody would have taken that. So I don't really think it's over. What I do think, however, I think there'll be twists and turns to come, but I do think that Arsenal are slipping at the worst possible time. They're, they're struggling at the worst possible time. Time and time again this season, we have flagged why Arsenal have been so good. And, you know, you can talk about the razzmatazz of Bukayo Saka and Martin Odegaard and Gabriel Martinelli. You can talk about the, the key clinical approach of Kai Havertz scoring goals when it most matters. You can talk about the, the truly brilliant, arguably the best player in the Premier League, Declan Rice, and the smart acquisition that he was. There are a hundred things you can talk about as to why Arsenal are so good and have been the best team in the world this calendar year. But the answer is simply this. It's the defence. It is the best defensive partnership in the league. It is the best goalkeeper in the league. And it is the best right back in the league. That is why Arsenal have been so good. You know, you can talk about Saka and this isn't me being snide to Saka or anything like that. But the reason Arsenal have been so good is very simple. It's because Gabriel has been outrageously brilliant. Decisive in both boxes. Very good in the opposition box. Stingy, miserly, filthy, aggressive, rugged, robust. Everything that you want from a centre-half in his own box. And he's not even the best of the two. So you know how highly I must rate Gabriel Saliba if I'm waxing lyrical like this about Gabriel. And then Ben White, since the turn of the year, has been the best player in an Arsenal shirt. Seriously, I think he's been the best player in an Arsenal shirt. You know I'm not a huge fan of Ben White, but... Since the turn of the year, since he got back from Dubai, since Mikel Arteta arrived back in England from taking his team on that winter sun, Ben White's been the best player in an Arsenal shirt. Absolutely sensational. Really brilliant. So the reason why Arsenal have been so good is their defence was so good. You know, David Raya, people question whether that was a good signing from Arteta. He's going to win the Golden Gloves. He's got the Golden Gloves in the bag already, despite the game he'd missed. Truly, truly brilliant. But it's gone shaky. It's gone really shaky. Like, Gabriel has chosen probably the worst week in his life to drop out of form. If there's ever a week to drop out of form, it is not when you're playing Bayern Munich at home and Aston Villa at home in must-win games in the Premier League. Arsenal have been so unlucky here because when you are playing at home in between your European games, you want an easy game. Firstly, you want it to be at home, so they got that. Secondly, you want it to be easy, and they got Unai Emery. They got Aston Villa. They got Ollie Watkins. They didn't want that. Manchester City got what they wanted. They got Luton at home. Basically, the dream fixture. But Arsenal needed to win. They absolutely needed to win. And they didn't. And crucially, they were well beaten. Villa deserved the points. Villa were the better team. Villa, despite struggling a bit in the first half, they waited, they were considered, and they struck like a viper when it most mattered. It was a brilliant masterclass from Unai Emery. And it is about time that people started to respect Unai Emery and put him at the very top echelon of the managers that are not elite. He is the best once you discount Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp. If you want to talk about Klopp and Guardiola, talk about them, and, but, but talk about them alongside Carlo Ancelotti and Jose Mourinho and Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger. If you want to talk about mortal managers, the very best manager in the league is Unai Emery. And I always think that his time at Arsenal was slightly underappreciated. He had Arsenal in a European final. That's significant. Arsenal have a pitiful record in Europe. Unai Emery had them fifth in the league and in a European final. OK, they got battered in that European final. But he had them in it. And he also had them fifth in the league. He leaves, Arteta comes in, they finish 8-8. But there is something in Arteta getting done by Unai Emery time and time again. The double this year. Aston Villa have done the double. Unai Emery, those six points, have stopped Arsenal winning the league, potentially. And you've got to remember that he's done it before. He did it with Villarreal. He came to the Emirates in a European semi-final with Villarreal and knocked Arsenal out of Europe. So Unai Emery is a sensational manager. He deserves so much credit. And his team, they were perfect. They were, they were resilient. They were careful. They weren't over-adventurous. They took their time, and then when they had the opportunity, they pounced like a snake, and they went for the jugular. When the atmosphere changed in the Emirates, and I've just spoken to the rather famous now, Cabby, cousin of mine, who is an Arsenal fan, and he told me that the atmosphere in the ground, despite being brilliant this year, and, you know, you've got to give a lot of credit 
to Arteta for getting the fans on side, to the players for invigorating the support, to the Ashburton army. If that's your thing, fair play. They've made a racket in that ground. But apparently it was tense today. Apparently it was really, really... They were outdone and they were outfought and they were outthought. And Mikel Arteta needs to take some responsibility here. You know, when we talk about where it went wrong, I don't think Arteta's substitutions were good. At nil-nil, I don't know what he was thinking. I think he rotated too much as well. So I think Mikel Arteta really does need to put this one down to experience, but galvanise his team. They have got an amazing opportunity this year. They can win a European Cup and they can win a Premier League. There are six games to go, and those two things are true. I would dream of my team being two points behind Man City with six to play with a better goal difference. I wish it was us. And there seems to be this weird defeatist attitude from Arsenal fans, a lot of them. And it doesn't really chime with me. Do me a favour. Let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with me here? Or do you think that it's gone and Manchester City are therefore champions? Thank you so much for watching this video. Really do appreciate it. Please give it a like and click subscribe. Would love to welcome you into this community. Have a good night.